We're at a crossroads. From time to time, a section of rail needs repair, but that doesn't mean the whole line needs replacement. The same way being proud of your history doesn't mean you're stuck in the past. No, we're not stuck. We hear the whistle blowing and we're inspired. Inspired by the legacy of the people who transformed this terrain into a rail yard that supplied America with the ore needed to win world wars. We're inspired by our unshakable identity, hanging tight like David facing down Goliaths. And we're moved by stories of our community's kindness. No matter who needs help, neighbors pitch in and get the job done. Hushed and humbled are more at play than pontification. But don't for one second think that means Proctor is a simple small town. It was built as a company town and it continues down the tracks of time. And this rail revival is our destination. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Rails TV for tonight's Boys Varsity Hockey Action featuring your Proctor Rails at 17-6-0, facing off against the North Shore Storm at 10-9-3. I'm Tim Rowiter on the call. Uh, we have a great student crew here tonight working uh, this game, and uh, I'll uh, go through who they are right now. Our director producer is Nikki Olson. Our producer is Zach Elstead. Camera number one, Ben Allen. Camera two, Maddie McDonald. Camera three, Aiden Drake. And our scoreboard technician, Maddie Bowman. So thank you to those students for making tonight's broadcast possible. The rails come in after two nights ago. Brecken Ross's goal, shortly into overtime, uh, allowed the rails to defeat Duluth Marshall two to one in a very well played game by both teams. And the rails now have won since December 19th. 12 of their last 14 games and looking to extend that tonight and hit the playoffs which start not next week but the week after so we're getting down there to attorney time uh, so the rails looking to uh, beat North Shore here tonight and then uh, Northern Lakes next Thursday to uh, finish the season 19-6-0 heading into the playoffs the section 7A playoffs and uh, North Shore on the other hand 10-9-3 coming into tonight's game and they're coming off uh, two straight victories, three of the last four they've won. They uh, defeated Moose Lake area six to one uh, on Tuesday. So uh, both teams uh, playing good hockey right now. Uh, you can't uh, talk about the rails uh, here without talking about the goaltender, A.J. Riles. Uh, his save percentage now on the year is over 95%, which is amongst the top in the state amongst all goalies. And uh, he made 39 of 40 saves last on Tuesday against Marshall uh, and a great showing there by Riles. Uh and to talk about Ross's uh, Tanner Ross, Brecken Ross, Austin Bryant Wyatt Meinheim some decent scoring prowess here for the Rails this year and uh, on the other side you're going to have Zach Bentler in goal for the for the uh, North Shore Storm and uh, both teams are going to hit the ice here in a moment and it's raining outside and it's unseasonably warm as normal this year. But inside the Sports and Events Center, great crowd here tonight. It's senior night, so between the first and second period, we will have uh, an honoring of our senior players and cheerleaders. And so we'll stay tuned for that and show you that. But uh, another great crowd here tonight to take in the Rails hockey action. Uh, by the way, we are going to be streaming live on Saturday Again, we will be streaming live on Saturday uh, for the Section 7A Girls Semifinals as the Mirage will take on Colque Esco Carlton. And then it'll be Duluth Marshall taking on, uh, I believe it's going to be the Moose Lake area. So both those games will be live right here on Rails TV. And the Mirage looking for another trip to state as uh, 
They will be right here in their home barn in those section semifinals. The section finals for girls hockey will be next Wednesday, and we're hoping to have that also on Rails TV. But uh, now both teams have taken the ice, so we're going to turn it down to uh, Mark Fleischer for our starting lineups. For tonight's Minnesota State High School League boys hockey game that features the storm from North Shore against your Proctor Rails. Let's meet the starters for the visitors from North Shore. Starting in goal, wearing number 33, Zach Bentler. At defense, number four, Tucker Cook. Also on defense, number 12, Jacob Carpenter. At a wing, number eight, Cole Anderson. Also at wing, number nine, Braylon Hoff. And at center, number 15, Aiden Althaus. The assistant coaches are Tom Johnson and Andy Fellow. The head coach of the North Shore Storm is Sean Lundgren. meet the seniors for your 2023-24 Proctor Rail. He's a senior that wears number one, Vinny Verbal. Wearing number three, senior Cooper Johnson. Senior number 12, Nolan Oakstead. Senior number 13, Kellen Towers. Senior number 19, Dylan Davidson. Senior number 22, Ethan Carter. Let's go back to senior number 20, Wyatt Meinerheim. Senior number 27, Carson Pavlowitz. And senior number 33, A.J. Riles. This is your 2023-24 senior class for your Proctor Rail. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, if we can ask you, you could please rise if you're able, and gentlemen, kindly remove your hats for the singing of our national anthem tonight from Olivia Morin Swanson. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets rang glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the home of the brave. Great job. 
Wow, what a great rendition of the national anthem by Proctor's very own Olivia Morin Swanson. And we're ready for puck drop here as the rails get ready to take on the North Shore Storm. Uh, for the Storm, coming in, uh, leading scorers for the Storm, uh, Jake Stadler, number 29, comes in with 17 goals, 21 assists, 38 points on the year. I believe he just also signed a letter of intent to play football at the University of Minnesota Duluth. And you also have uh, Aiden Allhouse, 12 goals, 8 assists, 20 points. And Cole Anderson, 6 goals, 14 assists with 20 points. So those three will be looking to get on the board. Zach Bentler in goal. Uh, he comes in with a 91% save percentage, 2 shutouts. And he'll be tested tonight uh, by Ross Bryant, Carter, Meinheim, Towers, Giswold. The Rails will uh, be looking to score early here as... Last, uh, on Tuesday, goals were hard to come by. Only two goals in the game, one in overtime to defeat Duluth Marshall. And so, if you have time, come on out to the Sports and Events Center, catch this one. It's gonna be a great battle as this could be a preview of the first round matchup in the Section 7 playoffs as it's very likely that the Rails could end up with the number four seed and North Shore Storm end up with number five. So they would play right here uh, in that first round of the playoffs. So settle in uh, and get ready for your first period action. Our referees tonight, Kevin Morrison and Pete Joby. Our linesman is Chris Cusera. And here we go. All aboard. Rails TV coverage of Rails hockey is underway. Ross on the draw against Althaus. Rails control the draw. They won quite a few draws on Tuesday. Big hit at center as number 12, Jacob Carpenter, laid out uh, Nolan Oakstead, or excuse me, uh, Bryant. Now here's Oakstead shot and deflected out front by Bryant. Steered away by Bentler. Puck held in. Rails applying pressure early on here. Clearing attempt by the Storm. It gets out to neutral. Bryant right there. Makes a move at the line. Makes another move. Good moves there by Bryant. Heading to the net. Still with control. Now it's Carter. Carter back to the point to Oakstead. Oakstead cross ice to Pavlovich. His shot. Right in the breadbasket of Bentler. He holds on and we'll have our first whistle here with 16-23. Remaining in period number one. So Davidson will be on the draw here to Bentler's left. Facing off against number 28, Kip Jones. One by Davidson, long shot by Meinheim through traffic. That went just wide. Picking up there is Cam Peterson. Peterson off the boards, out to center, held in there by Cooper Johnson. Right down low, he had Davidson all alone. Davidson couldn't hold on. Ratke trying to get it out of the zone. Now Davidson from behind the net, tries to center. Cut off there. Hit hard into the side boards. That's, that's Brecken Ross. Now here's Davidson's shot, and that goes just wide. Rails applying pressure. Good zone time here to lead this game off. Centering pass right up front, trying to hit Brecken Ross. Analyst shoots, and that goes wide, but that'll be corralled there by Davidson. His shot off the blocker of Bentler. Now the puck out to neutral, cut off there by Johnson. Johnson headmans it up to Davidson. He tips it in the zone. Rails get a fresh set of skaters out there. Back to pick it up for the Storm, Reese Radke. But the puck's held in by Giswold. Giswold to the circle. His shot, it's high. It went off the blocker. He was going for that upper corner. Now Boysen behind the goal, tries to center. Gets it back, now stolen away. Oakstead able to hold the puck in. Battle along the near wall, now it comes out to center. Pavlovich there for the rails. Spins, looks. Pavlovich gains some speed, fires it forward. That's the Towers. Towers hits the brakes, drops it off to Giswold. That's too far. Now it's back out to center, held in by Oakstead. Swung around the boards. Pavlovich will be the first man there. He'll hold it in. Boysen now turns and fires. That goes wide. Storm unable to get the puck out of their own end. Now Towers along the near wall. Gains the zone, now Boysen will pick it up there. Boysen in the corner, looking. A clearing attempt, held in by Anila. Now here's Bryant, Bryant picks it up. Bryant's got some room. Bryant around the defense, Bryant looking, shot! And a glove saved by Bentler as Bryant tried to go high glove side across the crease. And Bentler puts the glove on it, so five saves early on by Bentler as the Rails have been peppering 
uh, the Storm and bottling them up here in the first period. Good, great start of your Coach Lasby. Now plays goes on. Here's Bryant. Drops it off to Anil. Anil a cross ice pass to Johnson. Johnson, he'll just fire towards the net. Tipped out front. Bentler steers that away. Now battle behind the, the, the net. Ross back there. Outlet pass. That's intercepted. Now here's a chance. And the, the Storm trying to just get into the offensive zone for one time. Now back the other way comes Bryant. He's got Carter with him. Two on four. Bryant around the defense. So oh, another great move. And the shot goes just wide. Now Tanner Ross. Looking, Ross hits the brakes back to Oakstead. Oakstead looks his shot. That's steered away easily by Bentler. Now the puck held in again. Oakstead down low battling against Carpenter. Now out of the zone. Here comes Stadler. Stadler just dumps it in. Pavlovich sends it out to neutral to Ross. Ross drops it off to his brother Brecken. Brecken cuts to the middle. Brecken to the middle. Shot! Score! Make that two in a row for Brecken Ross, dating back to Tuesday. I mean, the game winner in overtime. So Brecken Ross gets the goal here in the first period. Shots are eight to zero as the Storm have not able, been able to get it out of their own end. So with 13-13 remaining, Brecken Ross gets the rails on the board. And we'll find out from Mark Fleischer who got the assist. I believe his brother uh, Tanner will get an assist. And we're back to live action here. Now here's my nine. Rails, his eighth goal of the season. Number eight, Brecken Ross. He got an assist on that goal from number 33, A.J. Ryoltz. That's Ross from Ryoltz, that goal coming at 347. So Ryoltz gets on the score sheet, not only for saves, but also an assist. And we'll take a look and see here uh, if Ryoltz has been credited with an assist all the rest of the year. He has not, so that's his first point. Oh, actually, excuse me. Yeah, no, that's his first point of the year. Offensively, so contributing offensively as well. Now here's Johnson. He'll swing it around the boards, trying to hit Brecken Ross. Ross in the corner. Ross centers it, steered away by Bentler. Meinheim picks it up, drops it off to Johnson. He sends it to the center. Here's another chance. Dan, uh, Davidson, excuse me. They had uh, Bentler down, and Davidson spun and fired, and Bentler was in good position. So 12 shots unanswered here so far early in the first period. Only goal, Brecken Ross here just a moment ago with the assist from the Rails goaltender, goaltender uh, A.J. Riles. Now Johnson, he'll swing it around the boards again. Brecken Ross in the corner. Ross makes a move, now heads back behind the goal again. Battling there against Stadler. Puck squirts loose. Pinned against the boards by Davidson. Now it's sent out to center. Johnson couldn't control. Now here's a chance for Anderson. Anderson in on the lawn. Anderson can't get it past Riles. And we're going to have our first penalty of the game as the rails are going to go shorthanded. Anderson had a breakaway, but they're going to call a hook, I believe, against uh, Cooper Johnson. Yep, there'll be a hooking call against Johnson. So on the power play this year, the North Shore Storm are 14%. So they've got 11 power play, or 12 power play goals, excuse me, uh, in 81 chances. And the Rails shorthanded this season. Did a nice job the other night against Marshall. The Rails shorthanded this season are 80.7%. So we'll have our first power play of the night. And Coach Lundgren over asking, uh, or excuse me, Sean Bartlett and asking the uh, officials why no penalty shot there. I wouldn't like my odds even with the penalty shot. With A.J. Riles in goal. Riles, first save of the night, a big one. Uh, breakaway by Cole Anderson. Now the rails will be shorthanded here. Oakstead picks it up. He's going to send it all the way down. 
Again, on Tuesday night, the Rails did a great job shorthanded against Marshall, keeping them off the board. Oakstead snaps his stick as he tried to send it in. He's got to go get a new piece of, piece of wood, and Pavlovich able to send it all the way down. Expensive broken stick right there. Now Anderson into the offensive zone, trying to get around Anala. Anala. Now he'll swing it back around. This is to Meeks. Meeks drops it off to Carpenter. Carpenter across to Stadler. That's through traffic off skates into the corner. Stadler gets his own rebound. Now Meeks in behind the goal. 111 left in the power play. Long shot. That's deflected. Riles had no clue where that was. Luckily it went high. Now out to the middle. Puck loose. Lobbed over the net. Now Pavlovich will pick it up for the rails, and he's going to send it all the way down, trying to hit Ross. Ross is right there, but cut off by Stadler. Now here's Bryant. Bryant's got Ross with him, shorthanded. Bryant looking. Bryant back to Ross. Ross will take it out to neutral, kill some more time off this power play. Now he backhands it up to Oakstead. Oakstead sends it back in. 35 seconds left in the man advantage. Now into neutral, dumped in by Althaus. And they're going to say an offside, so that'll give the Rails a free exit out of the zone with 20 seconds left. Oakstead just hits the brakes and waits. And now he'll send it all the way down, try to hit Boysen. Now Boysen's going to be the first one to the puck behind the goal. He's pinned against the boards by Carpenter. Carpenter gets it back, swings it back up the boards. That's to Anderson. Anderson drops it off to Stadler. Stadler can't get around the defense, but Anderson picks it up there. Rails are full strength. Now Anderson centering pass, no one home for the storm. So back the other way, here comes Gavin Davidson. His shot, that's off a of skate. He gets his own rebound. Davidson behind the goal, pucking his skates. Now swung around to the point. That's to Giswold. Giswold looks down to Towers, tried to get the give and go. And puck volleyed in the air. Now picked up by Anderson, out of the zone he goes. And Anderson will just dump it down low and he'll try to get a change. Right there's Johnson fresh out of the penalty box. Centering pass, Giswold intercepts. Now Boysen. Gavin Davidson in behind his own goal. Hits the brakes back the other way. Outlet pass, that's to Boysen. Boysen tries to give it to Giswold. Now takes it himself. Now Boysen into the offensive zone. Giswold takes it off his stick. Now it's back out to neutral. Win Giswold. Long pass up to Pavlovich. Pavlovich hits the break, sends it in. Meinhein right there for the rails. It swings all the way around. Ross trying to hold the zone. It gets out to center. Anala picks it up there. Anala pass across ice to Meinhein. He tries to get around the defense. Meinhein with speed. Meinhein shot. Turned away by Bentler. Now a long pass. That's going to go all the way down. We're going to have an icing with 8.46. Left in period number one. Rails lead 1-0 on Brecken Ross's goal. And shots currently 13 to 1 in favor of the Rails. So face off to Bentler's left. It's Davidson going against Stadler. Face off controlled by the Storm. That's picked up by number four, T Tucker Cook. He reverses it around, picked up by Pavlovich for the Rails. Pavlovich tries to make a move. Now Althaus tries to get out of the zone. Picked up by Brecken Ross. Ross just tips it back in. Outlet pass to Anderson. That's cut off by Anala. Now Davidson sends it right back. Brecken Ross is going to be the first one to get there. Ross looking. Ross back to Pavlovich. Back to Ross. Ross off his stick. Now Stadler out of his own end. Stadler hit hard into the boards. And now the puck on end. And it'll be back... Uh, Pavlovich will settle things down. Drops it off for Davidson. Picked up by Ross. Ross out of his own end. Loses control. Now he gains it back into the offensive zone. Cut off there. Dump in pass. Intercepted by Johnson. His pass too far for Oakstead. Aldhouse along the near wall. Excuse me, that was Car Carpenter. And Ross dumped in the middle of the ice. No call. Rails bench wanted to call there. Now puck flipped out to neutral. Ross gets knocked off the puck at center. Dump in, dumped back in, in behind Riles. 
Again, early in this game, this whole first period have been played for, for the most part at neutral and a lot in the storm zone. Now here's a chance for Bryant. Bryant right there, shot. Oh, what a glove save. Two on O chance, Bentler gets over on the pass across by uh, Bryant trying to hit Ross and Bentler makes the save on the night so far. Very easily could be two to nothing right now, but Bentler puts the glove over and snags it out of the air and we're still one nothing. So excellent save by Bentler. Now face out controlled by the rails. Johnson drops it off to Ross. Ross can't control, it's kicked into the corner. Carter there. Kip Cole Anderson now up the boards. Oakstead able to hold it in. Oakstead, one of the seniors will be honored here tonight. This puck swung around, now picked up by Aiden Althaus. His pass across, knocked away by Oakstead. Now Carlson, Carter, excuse me, with the four check. Bryant right there, he's pinned against the wall. Johnson's shot, that's steered away by Bentler. That's all the way across. Gavin Davidson there as well. He sends it back to the opposite corner. Bryant right there, gives it to Tanner Ross. Tanner Ross shot, that goes wide. Boysen right there for the rails, back to Gavin Davidson. Cross to Pavlovich, he's not there. So it's tipped out to center. Pavlovich re recovers, cross to Boysen. Boysen gets it, knocked off his stick. And now Tanner Ross. Tries to dump it in, but his stick gets tipped. Now swing around the boards. This is Reese Radke. Battled there by Bryant. Picked up now by Braylon Hoff. Puck still remains in the uh, offensive zone. Giswold now wins the race of the puck. Giswold centering, pass shot. Oh, another save by Bentler. Two huge saves by Bentler. I think it got through to him, I'm not sure. Could have been uh, off the uh, knee pad of number 19, Cooper Anderson, but uh, either way, that was a heck of a uh, opportunity for the rails. Now Giswold looking. His shot, that's deflected and held on to, and now back to Pavlovich. Pucks, plays, play moves on. Pavlovich down to Giswold. Giswold shot, rebound right up front. Boysen right there, can't get the stick on it. Now Carpenter tries to clear. That gets out to center. Pavlovich will settle things down there. Storm trying to get a change. Now win Giswold for the rails through neutral. Round one defense tries to send it in. Fans on the dumping attempt, but now it's picked off. Now here's Towers. Towers shot. That's into the glove of Bentler. And he makes his 18th save of this first period. And two huge saves, point blank opportunities. One with his glove and one, I don't know how, sprawling across and getting a pad on the shot by Tanner Ross just a moment ago. Bentler, a senior goaltender for the Storm. One of the captains. Now faceoff again, controlled by the Rails. The Rails have improved a lot on faceoffs here in recent games. Brecken Ross down, passes it back to Anila. Anila, cross to Pavlovich, his shot from the point. That's into the glove of Bentler again. And Bentler holds on and shows everybody he's got it. So 4.50 left here in the first period. Our shots are 21 to one in favor of the Rails. And when the Rails get confident here, they're a fun team to watch. And so far, so far the Storm have had no answer. Now here's Meinheim. Meinheim tries to sneak it in near side and sent all the way down. We're gonna have an icing. So the only goal in this game was Brecken Ross with 13-13 remaining. He got the assist from goaltender A.J. Riles as Ross is at neutral and the dumping attempt. And Riles sent it out to neutral to Ross and he came down and scored. And that's the only goal we have so far. Face off, controlled by the Storm. Swung around the boards, that's the number four, Tucker Cook. He tries to ring it up the boards, that's intercepted by Ross. Ross drops it off to Pavlovich. He sends it around. Cam Peterson now sends it back to Cook. Cook, outlet pass, trying to hit Weirman. Now Weirman's pocket gets picked by Ross. Ross trying to get it back in the offensive zone. He does, to makes a move. And they're going to say that was offside. Not so sure, but uh, offside, 4-14 remaining. Once again, between the first and second periods, uh, we're gonna have a little ceremony honoring the seniors of this year's team. 
10 seniors uh, players and five senior cheerleaders. Now Oakstead's pass to Carter. Carter tries to drop it off to Bryant. Held in by Oakstead. Picked up there by Carpenter. Carpenter's pass up the boards. Can't be controlled, so Meeks tries to get it out. Now here's picked up by Tanner Ross. Ross drops it to Carter. Carter back to the point to Oakstead. Oakstead can't hold it in. Now here's a chance. Yeah, Ethan Meeks down the left side. Meeks shot. That's deflected away by Riles. And now the rail's back the other way. So nice to have a goaltender back there that when you make a mistake and make a turnover, he's able to, to save you. And Meeks was going for the low blocker side that I saw was open from here. But uh, it looked like Riles might have been baiting him. Now out of the zone comes Stadler. Stadler with speed. Stadler, the senior captain, tries to get it across to Cole Anderson. Anderson with it now, tries to send it back to Stadler. Now pass out to the point. That's too far, goes all the way back. Boisen on the four check here. Boisen wins the race. Boisen with control now. Swings it back in behind. Picked up there by Giswold. Giswold right back behind, behind again to Boisen. 2.52 left in the first period. Only one goal so far to show for it. Buck held in by Cooper Johnson. Actually gets out to center. Boisen drops it off to Anala. Anala, long pass up to Towers. Towers tries to make a move. Knocked off the puck. Now Althaus. In behind his own goal. Cross ice pass, that's too far. That's gonna be picked up by Towers. Towers now looks. Towers shot, that deflects over the boards. Or over the uh, net, excuse me. Now Cooper Johnson's shot, that's deflected as well. Goes up out of play. 220 here remaining in period number one. And uh, you know, we uh, talked about the girls hockey uh, playoffs that'll continue on Saturday. Uh, 11 and two right here from the Sports and Events Center section 7A semifinals. And those will be uh, held on uh, and broadcast by Rails TV. But uh, the Proctor Hermitage Mirage in, on, Thursday, on Tuesday opened the playoffs with a 5 to 1 win over North Shore Storm. But the shots were like 68 to 7. And we could have something similar here tonight as Bentler you know, just playing great in goal for the sh uh, Storm. Already with 22 saves in this period compared to two for Riles. Now Anala across to Meinheim. Meinheim's cross ice pass deflected away. Now Anala trying to tip it forward. Johnson back for the rails here with 147 left in period number one. Stick with us at intermission as we have our senior night ceremony. Brecken Ross drops it off here to Davidson. Davidson into the zone. Davidson makes a move. Davidson trying to get it back and intercepted there by Andrew Werman. Riles. Settles it down as Pavlovich picks it up for the rails. Up to Meinheim. Meinheim looking. Meinheim, his shot goes wide. Right there, though, is Davidson. Davidson tries to feed it to the point. Picked off by Stadler. Out of the zone now come the storm. Pavlovich cuts off the attempt to dump it in. Riles looking to get back on the score sheet again, trying to swing the puck up. Now Stadler centering pass, and good defensive play there by... Brecken Ross. Now here's a two on one chance. Tanner Ross, Y. Meinhein. Tanner Ross, cross of Meinhein. That's picked off. Good play there defensively by Carpenter. Now dumped in by Cooper Anderson. Anderson's dump in, corralled by Anala. We have 40 seconds left here in period number one. Meinhein. Long rink wide pass to Tanner Ross. Ross able to tip it forward. Oh, chance there for Carter. Carter turns and fires. That's into the far wall. Picked up by Bryant. Bryant with 25 seconds left, tries to get behind the goal, but Stather knocks it away, picks it off. Stather, here's a chance for Ross, and he scores! <laughs> 19 seconds remaining, and the other Ross, Tanner Ross with the goal. And the rail's now two to nothing on their 24th shot of the period, and that one was set up. Stadler tried to do a little reverse, uh, and actually the puck hit the side of the net and squirted out front. Tanner Ross picked it up and shelved it on Bentler. And so we are now 2 to nothing here with 19 seconds left in period number one. Back to live action here. Ross drops it off to Anala. 
Scoring for your rails, his 18th goal of the season. Number seven, Tanner Ross. That's Ross unassisted, the even sprinkle coming at 16.41. So there's the horn and the end of our first period. It's your rails two, the storm zero, shots 25 to two. So 23 saves in that period by Bentler and only two needed for Riots. And uh, what's the plan here, coach? Are we gonna do some commercials before? Are we gonna do some commercials before? Okay, so we're gonna stay right here and join uh, PA address announcer uh, Mark Fleischer as we do our uh, ceremony to honor our seniors. Check out the great selection of beverages, food. With dominating first period here for the rails. Uh, again, 20, 24 shot, or 25 shots, excuse me. Uh, and the rails uh, definitely with a lot of confidence here. So before we have the Zamboni come out and do its thing, we're going to have our seniors honored here. Ten senior players, five senior cheerleaders. So enjoy that as Mark Fleischer in a moment will begin that ceremony. Before or after the game, be sure and stop by for the best pizza and subs in town. It's Proctor Pizza and Sub Shop, located at 204 3rd Avenue here in Proctor. Tonight's Proctor High School athletic event is sponsored in part by DeWalls, by Blackwoods, LCS Coaches, Lake Superior College, Shelton Pizza, The Teamsters 346, Hartel's DBJ Disposal, Midway Sewer, Coca-Cola, Reliable Insurance, RJ Sport and Cycle, The College of St. Scholastica, The 292 Group, Johnson Wilson, Range Paper, Proctor Federal Credit Union, Sather's Realty, ESC, Play It Again Sports, Advance Awning, Contract Tile, Senate Blacktop, Benson Electric, Carrick Sod Company, Cirrus, Arrowhead Concrete, and Pat Shelton's Farmers Insurance. If you would like to be a corporate partner of Proctor Athletics, contact the Proctor Athletic Office and talk to Anthony or Nate. Well, once again, welcome to the St. Luke Sports and Events Center for tonight's high school hockey game. Uh, tonight, it is our annual senior night well, we'll, uh, where we will present our senior cheerleaders and our senior hockey players. We're going to start with our senior cheerleaders. Our first cheerleader is in her third year of cheerleading, accompanied by Melissa, her mom, and Richard, her dad. Let's give a round of applause for Abby Lanthier. Her proudest accomplishment at Proctor is back, back squatting 200 pounds in UFIT. What she'll miss most about being a Proctor Rail is seeing her friends. And who would she like to thank and why? I would like to thank the captains for doing so much work. Her favorite all-time cheer memory is their last fall cheer performance. Let's give a round of applause for her parents and Abby Lanthier. Our next cheerleader has been doing this for six years. Along with her mom, Jennifer, let's give a round of applause for Ella Barber. Her proudest accomplishment at Proctor is that she was proud she got to be captain for three years. 
She started cheering in middle school and always looked up to the older girls, and it's cool that she got to be just like them now. Who would she like to thank? She'd like to thank her mom for coming to every game, making bows, being the team mom, and just being her biggest supporter. And her all-time favorite memory is skating at the Excel Center and almost falling on her face. Let's hear it for Ella Barber. Our next cheerleader has been doing this for three years. Along with her mother, Leah, and father, Brett, let's hear it for Ellen McLean. Some of her proudest uh, accomplishments at Proctor was winning the seventh grade talent show with Donna, Lexi, Lauren, and Abby by performing Seven Nation Army and Vines. She'll miss most about being a Proctor Rail is our tight-knit community. She loves walking into the rink and saying hi to all of her friends and their parents. She'd like to thank her mom and dad for always being there for her and supporting her through the ups and downs of high school. Let's hear it for Ellen McLean. Our next cheerleader has been cheering for three years. She's accompanied by her mom, Ray Lee, and her dad, Jace. Let's hear it for Lauren Johnson. Her proudest accomplishment at Proctor was joining track and field and beating a few of the all-time records for Proctor. She's going to miss her friends and people around her, and she'd like to thank her parents for being who they are and supporting her. Her favorite cheer memory is the performance last year at the halftime show of the basketball game. And her message for parents or coaches, teammates as she graduate greats is thank you for giving me a great high school experience and supporting me through everything. Let's hear it for Lauren Johnson. Our next cheerleader has been a cheerleader for two years. She's a comp accompanied by her mom, Jen, and her dad, Mike. Let's hear it for Lexi Knutson. Her proudest accomplishment at Proctor was beating Hermantown in volleyball in 10th grade. She'll miss most about being a Proctor Rail is all of the volleyball and football games, also the assemblies and fun activities. She'd like to thank her sister for always giving her tips and tricks throughout high school. She wouldn't be where she is without her. Her all-time favorite memory is when Chloe got stuck in the Hibbing Locker Room bathroom. One more time, let's hear it for Lexi Knudsen. And one final round of applause for your senior cheerleaders, Lexi, Lauren, Ellen, Ella, and Abby. Now we'd like to introduce you to our senior hockey players. Our first player came back to play his senior year. He's a goalie, wears number one. He's being escorted by his mother, Ava, and father, Kurt. Let's hear it for Vinny Verville. He's been playing hockey for 12 years, and he also plays soccer. When asked what Vinny's proudest accomplishment at Proctor is, he said going to state in soccer because it was a really cool experience. What Vinny will miss most about being a Proctor Rail is going to practice every day and seeing the boys. And his favorite all-time hockey memory was his second year of Bantams, as he has a lot of great memories from that year. He'd like to thank his parents for letting him play hockey and dropping him off and picking him up when he was younger. He also wants to thank all the coaches that made him work harder and made it fun. Vinny says his coaches have helped him become a better player and always pushing him to be a better student and goalie, and they have helped him have a better work ethic. He admires Coach Ward because he's pretty hard on us, and that's because he knows we can do better. He wants to be remembered as a person who always had a positive attitude and worked hard no matter what. No matter what. Let's hear it for number one, Vinny Verville. Our next senior 
is being escorted by his mother, Lori, and father, Craig. He plays defense. Number three, Cooper Johnson. Cooper has been playing hockey for 14 years and also plays baseball and is involved in Unified. When asked what Cooper's proudest accomplishment at Proctor is, he said going to Unified Basketball State. What Cooper will miss most about being a Proctor Rail is being in Unified class and hanging out with the kids. Cooper's all-time favorite hockey memory is going to regions in Bantams. Cooper would like to thank his parents and grandparents for always supporting him and pushing him to be the best. When asked how his coaches have helped him become a better player, Cooper says that coaches Danielson, Andy, and Corey have always been approachable if he ever needed anything. Cooper most admires coach Scott Pionk because he knows how to get everyone on the same page and can motivate everyone. He wants to be remembered as a good leader on and off the ice. Let's hear it for number three, Cooper Johnson. Our next senior is being escorted by his mother, Crystal. We'll move him to the end because I know he's not here. He's being accompanied by his mother, Kelly, and father, Vance. Let's hear it for number 12, defenseman Nolan Oakstead. Nolan has been playing hockey for 15 years. He also plays football, baseball, and is involved in Unified and Crew Club. When asked what Nolan's proudest accomplishment at Proctor is, he said being chosen as a captain of his two favorite sports and being part of the Unified basketball team going to state. What Nolan will miss about being a Proctor Rail is playing with his friends over the years in hockey, football, and baseball. His all-time favorite hockey memory is winning the Bill McGann Holiday Tournament this year. Nolan would like to thank his parents for always pushing him to be his best and for the, all the time and money they have given him throughout his years of playing sports. He said that his coaches have helped him become a better player by believing in him and pushing him to be do his best. He most admires his teammate A.J. Riles for working so hard to be the player he is. One more time, number 12, Nolan Oakstead. Our next senior is being accompanied by his mother, Cora, and father, Brian. He's been playing hockey for 14 years and also plays golf. Let's hear it for winger number 13, Kellen Towers. When asked what Kellen's proudest accomplishment at Proctor is, he said his go-ahead goal against Monticello was six seconds left in the game. What Kellen will miss most about being a Proctor Rail is the friends he made here. Kellen's all-time favorite hockey memories are staying at hotels with the team. He's been on all weekend tournaments over the years. He'd like to thank his parents for supporting his goals throughout his life. Kellen says that his coaches have, made it, uh, coaches have made him become a better player by always pushing him to do his best. He most admires Coach Ward because he pushes him harder than anyone else. He wants to be remembered as a hard worker. As he graduates, his message to all parents, coaches, and teammates is, thank you to everyone for supporting and pushing me to do my best. Let's hear it for number 13, Kellen Towers. Our next senior is being escorted by his mother, Sarah, and father, Matt. He's been playing hockey for 13 years and also plays baseball. Let's hear it for number 19, Dylan Davidson. When asked what Dylan's proudest accomplishments at Proctor are, he said, I'm proud of how far our program has come in the past three years, and I'm proud of going to region in back-to-back -back years back in Pee Wee's. He'll miss out on being a Proctor Rail is being his, with his friends every day in the bus ride celebrating wins. His all-time favorite hockey memory are all the overnights and bus trips. He'd like to thank his parents for their time and money they have spent over the years and for always pushing him to be his best. He wants to thank his coaches and teammates for making the past three years unforgettable. Dylan says his coaches have made him a better player by bringing him back 
to his love for the game and for always putting him in the best position to be a successful player. He wants to be remembered as a leader who will do anything for his teammates and for a grinder on the ice. He's also known as the best faceoff taker you'll meet. Number 19, Dylan Davidson. Our next senior will be escorted by his mother, Stephanie, and stepfather, Darren. He's a left winger that wears number 20, Wyatt Meinehein. He's been playing hockey for 15 years and also plays baseball. When asked what Wyatt's proudest accomplishment at Proctor is, he said making it to state for unified basketball. What he'll miss most about being a Proctor Rail is his teammates. His all-time favorite hockey memory is the Rochester Swing his sophomore year. He'd like to thank his parents because they're the only reason I am able to play hockey and go as far as I've gone for the sport I love. He says his coaches have helped him become a better player by holding accountable through his hockey career. Wyatt most admires Coach Ward for always holding him accountable and putting up with him on the bench, even when his frustrations get the best of him. He wants to be remembered as a coachable player, as well as a good player and a good person. When he graduates, his message to his teammates is, listen to the coaches and listen to what they say. Once again, number 20, Wyatt Meinehein. Our next senior is being escorted by his mother, Taryn, and his father, Chris. He's a forward at number 22, Ethan Carter. Ethan has been playing hockey for 13 years and also plays baseball. When asked what Ethan's proudest accomplishments at Proctor are, he says maintaining good grades while working hard in sports. He'll miss most about being a Proctor Rail is a tight-knit community. Ethan's all-time favorite hockey memory is from Twing Days. Ethan would also like to thank his parents for their undying support and to the coaches. He wants to thank them for their time and commitment and to everyone else that's been involved with Proctor Hockey. He wants to say to his coaches that they have helped him become a better player by teaching him to play the game the right way and how to be a complete player in all areas of the ice. He admires Coach Ward for how he applies his lessons in hockey to life and helps make us a better player when we leave the program. Let's hear it for number 22, Ethan Carter. Our next senior is escorted by his mother, Melissa, and father, Nathan. It's defenseman at number 20, Carson Pavlovich. Carson has been playing hockey for 13 years. He also plays golf and is part of the National Honor Society. When asked what Carson's proudest accomplishment at Proctor is, he said for always getting good grades while being an athlete. What Carson will miss most about being a Proctor Rail is representing his school and city. His all-time favorite hockey memory is the bus trip to Rochester. He'd like to thank his parents for all their time and money that they've spent on him over the years. And he says that his coaches have helped make him become a better player by pushing him from youth to high school to be his best. He admires his teammate A.J. Riles because of his hard work ethic and his strongest mindset. He wants to be remembered as a great teammate who wanted everyone to be their best and for the team to succeed. His message to his teammates is always have fun. Once again, number 27, Carson Pavlovich. Our next senior is accompanied by his mother, Anne, and father, Dave. It's goaltender number 33, A.J. Riles. When asked what his favorite and proudest moment at Proctor, he said either my Bill Moen Floor Hockey Championship or it could be winning the Bill McGann Tournament this year. What A.J. will miss most about being a Proctor Rail is the memories he's made along the way 
with all the great people here. His all-time favorite hockey memory are all the time spent with the boys over the years. He'd like to thank his parents for taking care of him and supporting him through all of the highs and lows. He says his coaches have helped him become a better player by motivating him to continue to work hard and persevere no matter what happens. He admires his brother Kenan the most. He says Kenan has always been a good leader and hates to lose. He wants to be remembered as a good leader and role model, but also someone you can talk to about anything. Once again, goalie number 33, A.J. Riles. And we do have one senior who could not be with us here tonight. He is a defenseman at number nine, Lucas Lillo. Lucas had been playing hockey for 11 years and also plays football and races dirt track cars. He just wants to... uh, say that he admires Coach Danielson the most because he looks up to him on and off the ice and wants to remembered, be remembered as a team player. Let's give one more round of applause for your 2023-24 seniors, Kellen Towers, A.J. Riles, Carson Pavlovich, Ethan Carter, Wyatt Minahein, Dylan Davidson, Nolan Oakstead, Vinnie Verbal, Cooper Johnson, and Lucas Lillo. Can't hear the TV? Need to protect your hearing? Audiology Concepts connects patients to their lives again by offering ear cleanings, providing earplugs for protection in loud environments, and helping people get hearing aids. Audiology Concepts also offer hearing evaluations, verification of hearing aids, and hearing aid repairs. There are seven different locations across Minnesota and Wisconsin. Audiology Concepts, you'll love what you hear. Protect your investments this winter with an enclosed trailer from Wittis Trailer Sales, located in ESCO. We also sell cargo trailers, utility trailers, snowmobile trailers, and much more. Did you know we stock a full line of Heinecker snowplows? While you're here, shop the largest selection of Mahindra tractors in the area. Don't forget about our service center, ready to tackle jobs of any size. Wittis Trailer Sales in ESCO, where customers become friends. Our experience with uh, Heritage Window and Door was great. My wife called and got someone right away, which is really great to actually speak to a live person. Very painless, uh, very easy process. One of the things that we were really looking for was not only a high quality window, but really the installation itself. As a homeowner, you really want your window installation done right the first time. And that's not always the case with other companies. And with Heritage Window and Door, that was the case. It was a great experience. You know, I was a little apprehensive the first time getting hearing aids, but they just made me feel so welcome, like it was the only customer they had. You know, you don't know how bad it is till you get hearing aids. I mean, I, I can hear my grandchildren when we FaceTime now. I'm watching TV, I understand what people are saying. I don't have to ask for somebody to tell me what they've said. Uh, and that's what keeps me coming back. And I've got a new set of hearing aids and couldn't be happier. Stop living with the frustrations of untreated hearing loss. Call today. Who will our next generation be? What will they achieve? At Proctor Public Schools, we create an environment to educate, engage, and inspire our students to seek adventure, gain knowledge, and make a difference. Proctor Public Schools, we see greatness in our students and great things for their future. We educate, engage, and inspire For years, Troy Service Center has been the go-to auto repair shop in the Proctor community. Quality and efficient repairs make it more convenient to have your vehicle serviced. Troy's has always been for the community. 
That's why they have been favored by Proctorians alike. But don't just take our word for it. Check out the many reviews on their service. Choice Service Center can ensure that your vehicle keeps your life driving forward for years to come. Choice Service Center has been servicing and repairing vehicles for three generations. To contact Troy Service Center, call 218-642-3322 or visit troyservice.com. Proctor Pizza and Sub Shop. Proctor Pizza offers baked pizza, unbaked pizza, subs, tacos, wraps, salads, tater tots, nachos, burritos, and more. Proctor's local family business for over 35 years. Proctor Pizza offers brand new monthly specials, such as the taco pizza, bacon cheeseburger pizza, Hawaiian pizza, and more. Proctor Pizza. Proctor's Reed Foundation was established to enable life-enriching academic, art, and athletic activities which cannot rely on traditional funding in the Proctor School District communities. Reed has provided grants for the Imagination Library, numerous sports teams, Rails TV, A Night to Shine, The Playground for Everybody, and most recently, Reed helped the Proctor Fire Department invest in life-saving handheld thermal devices. Visit rea3d.org to learn more about how you can support Reed and help your community. Hi, I'm Dr. Jay with Audiology Concepts at the Grand Rapids, Minnesota location. I have so many patients who tell me I wish I would have come in sooner because I thought it was just a simple miscommunication here or there or that the TV just needed to get turned up. Most people with hearing loss in the United States don't have a really severe hearing loss. It's more of a mild to moderate hearing loss and it happens so gradually over time you might not even notice it happening. So when you come in, not only have a really great opportunity to give you an update on the status of your hearing, but also to have a conversation about how to protect your hearing. A renewal by Anderson windows were installed in 2001. That was nearly 20 years ago and they're high quality windows. They have brought our beautiful view into our room. They're easy to care for. The beauty of these windows has enhanced the beauty of our home. It's not just the energy efficiency, but it has made our place look a lot nicer. They have just been a good overall investment. It's an excellent product. The service we received was excellent. What more could you ask for? Who will our next generation be? What will they achieve? At Proctor Public Schools, we see great things in the future. As we create an environment to educate, engage, and inspire our students to seek adventure, gain knowledge, and make a difference. What do we see in the next generation? We see greatness. Proctor Public Schools, don't just plan to graduate. Graduate with a plan. I'm Carrie Bailey and I am the audiologist with Audiology Concepts at the Duluth and Superior locations. A lot of gentlemen come in and they say, well, my wife is the reason why I'm here. She's been nagging me for weeks and months and years to come get my hearing tested and I'm just going to go get my hearing tested just to see where it's at. I want to help people communicate, get over the, the barriers that we're able to get over, help them live a much better, more fulfilling life. Can't hear the TV? Need to protect your hearing? Audiology Concepts connects patients to their lives again by offering ear cleanings, providing earplugs for protection in loud environments, and helping people get hearing aids. Audiology Concepts also offer hearing evaluations, verification of hearing aids, and hearing aid repairs. There are seven different locations across Minnesota and Wisconsin. Audiology Concepts, you'll love what you hear. Protect your investments this winter with an enclosed trailer from Wittis Trailer Sales, located in ESCO. We also sell cargo trailers, utility trailers, snowmobile trailers, and much more. Did you know we stock a full line of Heinecker snowplows? While you're here, shop the largest selection of Mahindra tractors in the area. Don't forget about our service center, ready to tackle jobs of any size. Wittis Trailer Sales in ESCO, where customers become friends. Who will our next generation be? What will they achieve? At Proctor Public Schools, we create an environment to educate, engage, and inspire our students to seek adventure, 
gain knowledge, and make a difference. Proctor Public Schools. We see greatness in our students and great things for their future. We educate, engage, and inspire. Proctor Pizza and Sub Shop. Proctor Pizza offers baked pizza, unbaked pizza, subs, tacos, wraps, salads, tater tots, nachos, burritos, and more. Proctor's local family business for over 35 years. Proctor Pizza offers brand new monthly specials, such as the taco pizza, bacon cheeseburger pizza, Hawaiian pizza, and more. Proctor Pizza. Who will our next generation be? What will they achieve? At Proctor Public Schools, we see great things in the future as we create an environment to educate, engage, and inspire our students to seek adventure, gain knowledge, and make a difference. What do we see in the next generation? We see greatness. Proctor Public Schools don't just plan to graduate. Graduate with a plan.
And welcome back to the St. Luke Sports and Events Center. We have had a long first intermission with senior night. Hopefully you enjoyed that, and the congratulations to all of our senior players and cheerleaders uh, for their great careers, and uh, hopefully uh, we can see a lot more action here uh, as we start uh, getting ready for playoffs here in two weeks. Um, we have a 2 to nothing score, rails on top, and the shots are 25-2 to two in that first period in favor of the rails. Uh, Zach Bentler uh, made some huge saves for the Storm to make sure that uh, that score didn't get any worse. Uh, so teams are finally back on the ice trying to get warmed up again uh, after that extended uh, intermission. And uh, in that first period, uh, only one power play. That was for the Storm. Um, as Cooper Johnson went for a hooking call, and they did not score on that power play, so 0 for 1. Uh, the goals in that first period with 13-13 remaining, uh, it was Brecken Ross who got the goal, and he got the assist from Rails goaltender uh, A.J. Riles. And then with 19 seconds left in period 1, it was Tanner Ross unassisted, and uh, that's where we stand as we get ready to drop the puck here on Rails TV, second period action all aboard. Here we go. Face-off controlled by the rails. Pavlovich sends it all the way down. Picked up there by Jacob Carpenter. He loses control. Now out of the zone. Kept in by Tanner Ross. He fans on the dump and attempt. Good to see Ross out there. Last game uh, was injured. Had a lower body injury. But was right back out there uh, for the rails in the next shift. Now picked off by Ross. Ross has it at the top of the circle. Toe drag. Shot off the post. And he got hit hard after he took the shot. And he's still down. And looked like he got took a head shot there a little bit. But uh, the shot right off the post. And so a referee's having a conversation here. Trying to determine where the faceoff should be. Looks like it's going to be outside the zone. So Ross looked, tried to get his second of the game, uh, but right off the post and took a hard hit after taking that shot. He's over being seen by Rails trainer Evan DeWald. Face off up in the rafters. Anila handles it. Now here's Cooper Johnson. He headmans it to Brecken Ross. Ross tries to dump it in. That's intercepted by the Storm. Now here's a chance for Meinhein. He skates past it. Now he tries to send it in. That's uh, off the referee's skate. Up to Andrew Weirman. Weirman can't control. Now he gets it back, tries to dump it in. Anila, here's a chance. And Cooper Johnson now with it behind the rails goal. Meinheim tips it to center. Dumped right back in the rails end. Now Anila out of his own zone. Up to Brecken Ross. Ross, rink wide pass, trying to hit Meinheim. He just dumps it in. Picked up there by Jacob Carpenter. He sends it around the net. Peterson now off the boards, trying to headman it up. That's intercepted by Pavlovich. Up to Oakstead. Oakstead gains the line, sends it in. And Bentler can't control, so Brecken Ross picks it up, drops it off for Pavlovich, but instead it's picked off. Oakstead, rink wide pass to Meinhein. He can't control. So right there is Pavlovich. He sends it up the boards off the linesman. So picked up by Giswold. Back to Oakstead. Over to pa Pavlovich. Pavlovich across the line. He's going to just send it down low. Gets hit at the blue line. A little less pace here for the rails early on. Again, that long intermission. Both teams just kind of trying to get warmed up again. There's a long shot on to Ryalt, So he gloves it, settles it for Pavlovich. Breakout pass to Boisen. Boisen. Stops his feet. Boys, and now will send it all the way up to Towers. Towers around the defense. Towers centering pass. Giswold right there, and he is taken down hard. No call. Referees let the play go on. Now the puck tipped out to center. Back to Johnson. Johnson cross to Anila. Anila to Boysen. Boysen settles it down over to Giswold. Giswold sends it down low. Rails will get a change. Back to retrieve for the Storm, Reese Radke. Pass across. That's now intercepted by Tanner Ross. Ross has Bryant with them, and they're going to say offside. They say Bryant went in a little too early. So 14.05 left here in period number two. No shot, or one shot, I should say, in this period. 
uh, with uh, three minutes in, stark contrast to that first period where there are 28 or 27 total shots. Only one shot so far this period, and that was by the Storm on a dumping attempt. Pavlovich sent it right back up the boards. Here's number nine, Braylon Hoff. Hoff across the line. He gets a shot. That's off the blocker of Ryaltz. Ryaltz just recently passed the 1,000 save mark for his career. He's committed to play at Division I Lindenwood University next year. Now the breakout pass. That's going to be held in now by Stadler. Stadler across to try to hit Peterson. Now the puck's loose. Now out to the point. Here's Peterson. His shot, that's in the bread basket of Carter, and that's out to center. And now the dump and attempt goes down the tunnel, and we'll have a face-off, and the face-off will be out in neutral. Ten seniors here for the Rails. Very successful season here. Jeff Lasby's fourth year at the helm. 17-6-0, looking at potential three or four seed in the Section 7 playoffs. Davidson on the draw. He's going against Althouse. Puck dumped in by Brecken Ross. Giving chase is Meinheim. There for the storm is Radke. He swings it around the boards. That's to Meeks. Meeks has trouble with it, but maintains control. He's pestered there. Nice job by Gavin Davidson. Now Ross picks up the puck, dumps it down low. Now Puck swung back up the boards. Now Dylan Davidson battling down low. That's Puck squirts out now. Davidson hit again. And we're going to have a penalty now. That looks like it's going to be against the Storm as Riles heads to the bench. Anila dumps it down low and picked up there by Davidson. Davidson gives a Ross. Six on five here right now. Waiting for the delayed call. Davidson, cross to Anila. Anila, down low to Meinhein. Meinhein, back to Anila. Anila takes a shot through traffic. Puck still loose, and it's finally covered up by Bentler. And we're going to have the first power play opportunity for the Rails. And as referee's talking about what number to call this one on. I want to say number four. Yep, that's what's going to be number four. Uh, Tucker Cook is going to go. So two-minute minor for roughing. So the rails, first power play of the night uh, on the penalty kill. The storm uh, at 85%, killing off penalties uh, for the rails. Uh, power play, uh, 15%. So now here's Pavlovich. Rails looking to get on the board here in the second period. Meinhein back to Pavlovich. Pavlovich. At the top of the circle, Meinhein shot. That's off the knee pad of Jacob Carpenter and goes out to center. Rails struggled in the power play uh, against Marshall on Tuesday. Power play's been a struggle all year for the Rails. Now here's Tanner Ross, gains the zone. Ross settles things down. Ross gets the puck knocked away. And it, there's Brecken Ross getting it back. Ross, Pavlovich back to Ross. Pavlovich top of the circle. Shot tipped out front by Bryant. That went over the net. Now Bryant out of the corner, backhand off the blocker. And the net has come off, and we've seen that net come off a couple times here now in the last couple games. And actually, Riles in the Tuesday game got a minor penalty for delay a game uh, when the net was knocked off. Uh, and it was off, uh, and Marshall actually scored while the net was off, and they did wave the goal off, but they gave Riles a penalty. So no harm here right now. So a little confusion by the storm on who should be out there. 115 left in the man advantage. Davidson on the draw. Controlled by the rails. Johnson. Anila. Oakstead. Oakstead shot. That's off of the hand of Davidson. Davidson still parked in front of Bentler. His shot. That's deflected. Goes over the net. Davidson right there. Carter picks it up. Now a clearing attempt held in by Anila. Anila crossed Oakstead. Oakstead crossed to Johnson. Johnson can't control it. Now back to Anila. Anila, his shot through traffic again hits Davidson. Davidson with two saves in this power play. 
by trying to screen out front. Here's Johnson again, his shot. Bentler with the save. Finally, uh, David's able to get out of the way at the last second, but Bentler saw it the whole way and covers up, so 39 seconds now. Remaining in the man advantage for the Rails with 11.01 left in period two. So the number two power play out there for the Rails. Face off again, one by the Rails. Here's Anila. Drops it down to Johnson. Johnson back to Anila. Here's Anila over to Oakstead. Back to Anila. His long shot through traffic again. Bentler with the save. Rebound. Puck still loose. And now the net is off again. So tangled up there was uh, Davidson with Bentler. And as he was going around the net, the net comes off again. So now there's only 24 seconds, and Coach Ward Lasby will go back to the number one power play unit. For the Storm, they're going to host uh, International Falls on Tuesday at Rukavina Arena. That game is set for 6 o'clock, and then they'll travel to St. Paul Johnson on Thursday at a 6 o'clock start. So those are the last two regular season games for the Storm. Uh, for the Rails, uh, their last game will be uh, next Thursday against Northern Lakes. And so then they'll be done with their regular season. So turning time has come. Even though it's felt like spring all year, all winter, uh, we now are starting to get into those spring tournaments. And, you know, if you like snow, you got to like the fact that the boys' hockey tourney is coming up because it always snows during boys' hockey tourney season. Here's Pavlovich at the top. Drops it down to Tanner Ross. Tanner back to Pavlovich. That's tipped away. Aiden Althaus, good tip there on the defense. 13 seconds left in the advantage. That pass to... Broken up by Stadler, sent all the way down. So that'll do it for the penalty by the Storm. So Rails 0 for 1 on the power play here tonight. Pavlovich out of zone end, feeds it up to Tanner Ross. Ross loses control at the lineup, gets it back. Here's a chance, shot, scores! <laughs> Wyatt Meinhein gets the goal, and he'll get the assist, I believe, from Ross. Or Bryant, one of the two, or maybe both, as just as the penalty expired, a uh, fast rush by the rails and just kind of a tic-tac-toe play that uh, went through the five-hole of Bentler, and we are now at a three-to-nothing score. <clears throat> now face-off controlled by Johnson. Up to Anila. Anila makes a move at the blue line. Up to Johnson again. Johnson, his pass tipped into the zone by Boysen. Giswold. Scoring for your rails. His 15th goal of the season, number 20, Wyatt Minahein. He got an assist on the goal from number 7, Tanner Ross, and number 27, Carson Pavlovich. That's Minahine from Ross and Pavlovich. That goal comes at 6.42. So Minahine from Ross and Pavlovich. That's Ross's second point of the night, a goal and an assist. And now we have a stoppage here as Puck got caught up in some equipment. And so Rails 3-0 lead. Shots 32-4 in favor of the Rails. This period, uh, the Rails out shooting the Storm, 7-2. to two. Now again, the faceoff controlled by the Rails. Rails have done a nice job tonight on the faceoff. Now the puck sent out to neutral over the Pavlovich's stick. Back to retrieve now is Oakstead. Giving chase for the Storm, number nine, Braylon Hoff. Hoff goes down hard behind the goal. Now Towers. Oh, the pass to Boysen goes 2-4. Boysen. Now Giswold. Giswold hit hard in the board as he enters the zone. Puck loose, Boysen. Now the other way, here comes number 15, Aiden Aldhouse. He loses control, now the pass off the stick of Bryant. Bryant, again the four check. And a hit at center, Carter took the brunt of that. Now Pavlovich, up to Carter, Carter with speed. 
Cross ice to Ross. Ross backhand tried to center back to Bryant. Now Carter spins and fires. He fans. Now back the other way. Johnson settles things down. He sends it all the way back down. Bryant from the side wall. Now here's Ross. Tries to feed it to the point. Pucks it out to neutral. Here's number eight now for the Storm. That's Cole Anderson looking for help. He sends it to the net. Ryle sends it and gives it off to Carter. 8-10 left in period two. And rails caught off sides here. Gavin Davidson backhand pass to Ross. Ross, good to see him back after taking a shot to the head on the shot attempt that went off the post earlier. Davidson sends it right back in. Rails touch up. Couple changes made. Bentler settles it behind his own goal. Meinheim drops it off to Brecken Ross. Ross, cross ice pass. Oh, almost intercepted by Peterson. Now Pavlovich holds the line. Picked up there by Davidson. Davidson over to Brecken Ross. Ross. <laughs> Drops it off to the defense. Oaks Edge just sends it right back down. Stadler for the storm. Tries to oh, headman the puck. Intercepted by the rails at neutral. Oaks Edge sends it right back in off the linesman. So back the other way come the storm. Weirman just sends it down low on goal. So that'll count as a shot. Now Ross knocked off the puck. Puck tipped forward by Meinheim. Now back the other way. Ross cuts him off there. Now picked up. Here's number 16, Cade Peterson. He dumps it down low. Right there is Davidson. He swings it around the boards to Oakstead. Oakstead up to Meinheim. Meinheim out of the rails end. Gains the red line. Now he looks. Toe drags. Cuts to the middle. Meinheim again. Shot. And he's dumped as he cuts across the Goal crease, but nice moves around the defense for another good scoring opportunity. Anla in behind the goal. Now Anla up to win Giswold. Giswold, he's got the three on two. Giswold around looking. Giswold, short angle shot. That's pinned. And now in behind the goal. Not able to be held in by Anla. That's going to go all the way down. And we're going to have an icing with 6.04 remaining in period number two. Hey, folks. Uh, if you like the broadcast, please make an effort to hit that like button because our uh, students like to see when uh, people enjoy the broadcast that they put on. And also hit that subscribe button if you want to be notified every time the Rails TV goes live and many of the events that we do, over 100 events every year uh, around the Rails community. Face off now. That's tipped out of the zone. That's going to go all the way down again. Not sure if it's going to be an ice. Yes, it will. You may have heard if you watch the senior uh, recognition that a couple of our seniors uh, mentioned the unified basketball team heading to state. Uh, so our Special Olympics unified basketball team uh, heading to the state tournament on Thursday next week at the Target Center. Uh, they'll face, uh, they'll face uh, Champlain Park at 1 o'clock uh, in the state semifinals. And unified Special Olympics means that uh, students who are have a disability are paired up with uh, able-bodied partners uh, to play basketball against other schools and it's a great uh, great thing that Proctor has going so congratulations to them making it to the state tournament I hopefully we'll have uh, a broadcast on Rails TV we haven't heard back yet from Special Olympics as to whether or not we can do that but hopefully we can but we're back to live action here as the rails intercept at center now here's Boisen, Boisen takes a shot. That's into the shin pad of the defense. Outlet pass, that's too far. Pavlovich will send it right back down low. Five minutes left in period number two. We should have a lot shorter intermission here now between the second and third. Bryant, out to Oakstead. Oakstead, long shot. That's tipped, goes just wide. I think it was Carter who got the stick on it. Pavlovich again, back to Oakstead. Oakstead again takes a shot. Bentler sees it all the way. Tip goes just wide. And again, we have the net come off. A 
I don't believe anything intentional, but uh, just that one peg just doesn't want to sit. Face off control by the Storm. It's number 17, Cam Peterson, who dumps it out of the zone. Right there is Oakstead to pick it up for the rails. Circles around, hits Bryant. Now up to Carter, two on two with Tanner Ross. Ross, toe drag shot right in the midsection of Bentler. He makes the save. That's his 35th save of the night. And a good toe drag move by Ross to get that shot away. So faceoff will go to Bentler's left. Bentler's played well tonight in the pipes for the Storm. Shots 38 to six in favor of the Rails. Three to nothing our score. Now right off the draw, here's Bryant! Tries to go short side and Bentler right there. So good quick move by Bryant off the faceoff to corral that loose puck and get a shot off right away. Faceoff again controlled by the Rails. Here's Pavlovich looking. Just Tries to dump it down low, fans, and now picked up by the Storm. All the pass off the stick. Now out to neutral to Pavlovich. He'll send it right back down low. Now Bryant again. First of the loose puck. Has it in the corner. Tries to get around the defense. And again, puck finds Bryant's stick. Crosses Ross. Back to Pavlovich. His shot! It scores! <laughs> Austin Bryant, we've seen him this whole shift being all over the ice, and this time a shot from Pavlovich at the point. Bryant was in great position, tips it upper shelf, and we're now at four to nothing. So that would be Bryant's, uh, I believe. That's going to be his uh, 19th goal on the year, his 34th You're point. And we'll see, I know Pavlovich will get one assist. We'll see if anybody else. Doesn't mean the whole line needs Scoring for your rails, his 19th goal of the season, number 14, Austin Bryant. He got an assist from number seven, Tanner Ross, and number 27, Carson Pavlovich. That's Bryant from Ross and Pavlovich. Even strength goal coming at 13.06. So Ross gets his third point of the night to go on two assists. Pavlovich also with his like second point of the night. Down the and the rail's up four to nothing here. Back to live action. Cooper Johnson tips it across to Anla. 311 left in period two. Cross ice pass to Brecken Ross. Now he feeds it up to Davidson. Davidson around the defense. Here's Meinheim. Meinheim looking. Shot scores! Why Meinheim! And it continues down the track. Meinheim's second of the night. And, and the Rails now is have a five to nothing lead here. Two quick goals, about 52 seconds apart. And the floodgates have kind of opened here now. Shots 41 to six in favor of the Rails. And uh, Bentler has uh, played a great game, but uh, unfortunately the Rails now have found the net three times here in this second period. Meinheim with two of them. So we'll see who got the assists on that. Scoring for your rails, his second goal of the hockey game, number 20, Wyatt Minahine. He got an assist from number 19, Dylan Davidson, and number eight, Brecken Ross. That's Minahine from Davidson and Ross. That goal at 13.58. And right, just like that, the Rails score again, as this time it's going to be, I believe, Blaine Boysen, possibly? Or Giswold. Not sure who got that one, but uh, the Rails now expand the lead to 6-0. Six, six that one uh, only 30 seconds, about 30 seconds uh, after the last. 
And again, we'll find out here, and we have a timeout here by the North Shore Storm. So it gives us an opportunity to catch our breath here a little bit, but gives us an opportunity here to uh, catch our breath, and the Rails with two goals in about a minute and 20 seconds. Three goals, I should say, in a minute 20 seconds. And the storm kind of reeling, so Coach Bartlett calls a timeout, settle the troops here a little bit. Took a while for the rails to kind of heat up the second period, but uh, for the last eight minutes, nine minutes, uh, it's been nothing but offensive zone time for the rails. Lots of shots. So this period uh, is 19 to four are the shots in favor of the rails. 44 to six overall. And we're going to wait and hear from Mark Fleischer as to who got credited for that goal and the assists. I want to say it's going to be Giswold with the goal. If so, that would be his uh, second goal of the year. Scoring for your rails, his second goal of the hockey game, at number seven, Tanner Ross. He got an assist from number 13, Kellen Towers, and number 27, Carson Pavlovich. That's Ross from Towers and Pavlovich. That even swing goal coming at 14-25. Well, I was way off. Uh, Tanner Ross, his fourth point of the night. Two goals, two assists, uh, and Towers along with Pavlovich with the assist. Pavlovich with three points tonight. So a good effort here uh, by the rails. And now back to live action. Towers trying to get it out of the zone. Picked up now, centering pass. That goes all the way out to center. Two minutes left here in period number two. Now the pass by Bentler. Right off the stick of Giswold, lets it off sides. So now Ross on the draw against Stadler at neutral. Face off. And tipped ahead to Bryant. Bryant drops it off. Bryant's had a great game here tonight. Been all over the ice. Good moves. Now here's to Anila. Anila tries to shoot. That's fanned on. So back the other way. Come the shore. Uh, storm, excuse me. Now Stadler on the left side. Stadler's shot. Rebound. Riles hasn't seen a shot in a little while. So we'll give him a break. <coughs> but... No one home for the rebound. Now here's Bryant. Bryant looking. Short angle shot. And again, the net comes off <coughs> for the fourth or fifth time this period. <coughs> so four goals this period for the Rails. 127 left in the second period, and we should have, if the score, score stays the same, running time in the third period. Six goal deficit. Davidson on the draw, one cleanly, back to Anila. Anila down to Meinhein, Meinhein cross to Brecken Ross, his shot, saved easily by Bentler. And we're gonna have a penalty, looks like it's gonna be Davidson. He's gonna go. We'll see what the call was. But the Storm are going to get their second power play of the night. So Dylan Davidson going to go for two minutes for cross check. And for the last minute 15 here of the second period, the Storm will get a power play. 0 for 1 here tonight on the power play. Looking for a spark here. Rails control the face off. Now Brecken Ross out of his own end. Two on two with Meinhein. Meinhein into the zone. Meinhein looking. Back to Ross. Oh, Ross did a little spin. Otherwise, he'd have been right there. 
Uh, but now back the other way, here's number 11, Ethan Meeks. Meeks sends it down low. Back there is Johnson. Puck loose. Meeks picks it right back up. Stadler back down to Althaus. Althaus shot, controlled, save, save again. Puck still loose. Two or three saves right there by Riles. And now the puck's out to neutral. So quickly, Storm up to 10 shots on the game on that little flurry. And there's going to be a delayed call for trip going against the Storm, so a short-lived power play. And the Rails will get a power play in the second period. So it'll be four on four action for the last 28 seconds here, period two. As number eight, Cole Anderson will head to the box for tripping. So the faceoff four on four will go to Bentler's left. Bentler, 40 saves here tonight. 46 to 10 the shots. Ross tries to win it ahead. Puck still loose at the circle. Ross comes away with it. Four on four here is now here Bryant. Bryant settles things down. Cross to Anila. Anila back to Pavlovich. Pavlovich to Bryant. Bryant, you've got 11 seconds left. Bryant over to Ross. Ross back to Pavlovich, Pavlovich looking, his shot deflected. Oh, and Bryant right in front. Couldn't get the shot away, and that'll do it for period number two. A great A chance, but Bryant's stick just a little too short, I guess, as he uh, wound up from about three feet away from Bentler and couldn't get the stick on it. So, great period for the Rails. Uh, we're going to take an intermission here. It should be a lot shorter than last intermission, so... Uh, Go and re uh, refuel and go to the bathroom, get a uh, drink of water or whatever you want, and uh, head back to the coach because we're going to be back here shortly with period three action right from the St. Luke Sports and Event Center. We'll be back. Can't hear the TV? Need to protect your hearing? Audiology Concepts connects patients to their lives again by offering ear cleanings, providing earplugs for protection in loud environments, and helping people get hearing aids. Audiology Concepts also offer hearing evaluations, verification of hearing aids, and hearing aid repairs. There are seven different locations across Minnesota and Wisconsin. Audiology Concepts, you'll love what you hear. Protect your investments this winter with an enclosed trailer from Wittis Trailer Sales, located in ESCO. We also sell cargo trailers, utility trailers, snowmobile trailers, and much more. Did you know we stock a full line of Heinecker snowplows? While you're here, shop the largest selection of Mahindra tractors in the area. Don't forget about our service center, ready to tackle jobs of any size. Wittis Trailer Sales in ESCO, where customers become friends. Our experience with uh, Heritage Window and Door was great. My wife called and got someone right away, which is really great to actually speak to a live person. Very painless, uh, very easy process. One of the things that we were really looking for was not only a high quality window, but really the installation itself. As a homeowner, you really want your window installation done right the first time. And that's not always the case with other companies. And with Heritage Window and Door, that was the case. It was a great experience. You know, I was a little apprehensive the first time getting hearing aids, but they just made me feel so welcome, like it was the only customer they had. You know, you don't know how bad it is till you get hearing aids. I mean, I, I can hear my grandchildren when we FaceTime now. I'm watching TV, I understand what people are saying. I don't have to ask for somebody to tell me what they've said. Uh, and that's what keeps me coming back. And I've got a new set of hearing aids and couldn't be happier. Stop living with the frustrations of untreated hearing loss. Call today. Who will our next generation be? What will they achieve? At Proctor Public Schools, we create an environment to educate, engage, and inspire our students to seek adventure, gain knowledge, and make a difference. Proctor Public Schools. We see greatness in our students and great things for their future. We educate, engage, and inspire. For years, Troy Service Center has been the go-to auto repair shop in the Proctor community. Quality and efficient repairs make it more convenient to have your vehicle serviced. Troy's has always been for the community. That's why they have been favored by Proctorians alike. But don't just take our word for it. Check out the many reviews on their service. 
Troy Service Center can ensure that your vehicle keeps your life driving forward for years to come. Troy Service Center has been servicing and repairing vehicles for three generations. To contact Troy Service Center, call 218-642-3322 or visit troyservice.com. Proctor Pizza and Sub Shop. Proctor Pizza offers baked pizza, unbaked pizza, subs, tacos, wraps, salads, tater tots, nachos, burritos, and more. Proctor's local family business for over 35 years. Proctor Pizza offers brand new monthly specials, such as the taco pizza, bacon cheeseburger pizza, Hawaiian pizza, and more. Proctor Pizza. Proctor's Reed Foundation was established to enable life-enriching academic, art, and athletic activities which cannot rely on traditional funding in the Proctor School District communities. Reed has provided grants for the Imagination Library, numerous sports teams, Rails TV, A Night to Shine, the Playground for Everybody, and most recently, Reed helped the Proctor Fire Department invest in life-saving handheld thermal devices. Visit rea3d.org to learn more about how you can support Reed and help your community. Potentials, lots of different options with the different loans that are out there. You know, what we'll do is we'll talk to you about your scenario, your situation. We'll figure out what actually works best for you. Um, but the key is what is going to be the most cost effective. So we will compare conventional versus FHA, you know, USDA versus, you know, FHA, different types of things that way. You know, sometimes even if you're a veteran, the VA loan might not actually make the most sense. You know, just because there are some fees associated with that loan that you might be able to do the same type of loan but do it cheaper with a different type of a program you know but again that's something that we will figure out you know we'll figure out the best scenario for you we'll give you the options but we'll obviously lead you in the right and most cost effective way to uh, purchase or refinance that house. Hi I'm Dr. J with Audiology Concepts at the Grand Rapids Minnesota location. I have so many patients who tell me I wish I would have come in sooner because I thought it was just a simple miscommunication here or there or that the TV just needed to get turned up. Most people with hearing loss in the United States don't have a really severe hearing loss. It's more of a mild to moderate hearing loss and it happens so gradually over time you might not even notice it happening. So when you come in, you not only have a really great opportunity to give you an update on the status of your hearing, but also to have a conversation about how to protect your hearing. Our Renewal by Anderson windows were installed in 2001. That was nearly 20 years ago and they're high quality windows. They have brought our beautiful view into our room. They're easy to care for. The beauty of these windows has enhanced the beauty of our home. It's not just the energy efficiency, but it has made our place look a lot nicer. They've just been a good overall investment. It's an excellent product. The service we received was excellent. What more could you ask for? Who will our next generation be? What will they achieve? At Proctor Public Schools, we see great things in the future as we create an environment to educate, engage, and inspire our students to seek adventure, gain knowledge, and make a difference. What do we see in the next generation? We see greatness. Proctor Public Schools, don't just plan to graduate. Graduate with a plan. Protect your investments this winter with an enclosed trailer from Wittis Trailer Sales, located in ESCO. We also sell cargo trailers, utility trailers, snowmobile trailers, and much more. Did you know we stock a full line of Heinecker snowplows? While you're here, shop the largest selection of Mahindra tractors in the area. Don't forget about our service center, ready to tackle jobs of any size. Wittis Trailer Sales in ESCO, where customers become friends. Our experience with uh, Heritage Window and Door was great. My wife called and got someone right away, which is really great to actually speak to a live person. Very painless, uh, very easy process. One of the things that we were really looking for was not only a high quality window, but really the installation itself. As a homeowner, you really want your window installation done right the first time. And that's not always the case with other companies. And with Heritage Window and Door, that was the case. It was a great experience. You know, I was a little apprehensive the first time getting hearing aids, but they just made me feel so welcome, like it was the only customer they had. You know, you don't know how bad it is till you get hearing aids. 
I mean, I, I can hear my grandchildren when we FaceTime now. I'm watching TV, I understand what people are saying. I don't have to ask for somebody to tell me what they've said. Uh, and that's what keeps me coming back. And I've got a new set of hearing aids and couldn't be happier. Stop living with the frustrations of untreated hearing loss. Call today. Who will our next generation be? What will they achieve? At Proctor Public Schools, we create an environment to educate, engage, and inspire our students to seek adventure, gain knowledge, and make a difference. Proctor Public Schools. We see greatness in our students and great things for their future. We educate, engage, and inspire. For years, Troy Service Center has been the go-to auto repair shop in the Proctor community. Quality and efficient repairs make it more convenient to have your vehicle serviced. Troy's has always been for the community. That's why they have been favored by Proctorians alike. But don't just take our word for it. Check out the many reviews on their service. Troy's Service Center can ensure that your vehicle keeps your life driving forward for years to come. Troy's Service Center has been servicing and repairing vehicles for three generations. To contact Troy Service Center, call 218-642-3322 or visit troyservice.com. Proctor Pizza and Sub Shop. Proctor Pizza offers baked pizza, unbaked pizza, subs, tacos, wraps, salads, tater tots, nachos, burritos, and more. Proctor's local family business for over 35 years. Proctor Pizza offers brand new monthly specials, such as the taco pizza, bacon cheeseburger pizza, Hawaiian pizza, and more. Proctor Pizza. Proctor's Reed Foundation was established to enable life-enriching academic, art, and athletic activities which cannot rely on traditional funding in the Proctor School District communities. Reed has provided grants for the Imagination Library, numerous sports teams, Rails TV, A Night to Shine, The Playground for Everybody, and most recently, Reed helped the Proctor Fire Department invest in life-saving handheld thermal devices. Visit rea3d.org to learn more about how you can support Reed and help your community. Hi, I'm Dr. Jay with Audiology Concepts at the Grand Rapids, Minnesota location. I have so many patients who tell me I wish I would have come in sooner because I thought it was just a simple miscommunication here or there or that the TV just needed to get turned up. Most people with hearing loss in the United States don't have a really severe hearing loss. It's more of a mild to moderate hearing loss and it happens so gradually over time you might not even notice it happening. So when you come in, not only have a really great opportunity to give you an update on the status of your hearing, but also to have a conversation about how to protect your hearing. A renewal by Anderson windows were installed in 2001. That was nearly 20 years ago and they're high quality windows. They have brought our beautiful view into our room. They're easy to care for. The beauty of these windows has enhanced the beauty of our home. It's not just the energy efficiency, but it has made our place look a lot nicer. They've just been a good overall investment. It's an excellent product. The service we received was excellent. What more could you ask for? I'm Carrie Bailey and I am the audiologist with Audiology Concepts at the Duluth and Superior locations. A lot of gentlemen come in and they say, well, my wife is the reason why I'm here. She's been nagging me for weeks and months and years to come get my hearing tested and I'm just going to go get my hearing tested just to see where it's at. I want to help people communicate, get over the, the barriers that we're able to get over, help them live a much better, more fulfilling life. Who will our next generation be? What will they achieve? At Proctor Public Schools, we see great things in the future as we create an environment to educate, engage, and inspire our students to seek adventure, gain knowledge, and make a difference. What do we see in the next generation? We see greatness. Proctor Public Schools, don't just plan to graduate. Graduate with a plan. And welcome back to the St. Luke Sports and Event Center here in Proctor. Rails TV coverage of Rails hockey tonight. 
The Rails are taking on the North Shore Storm. We are just about to start the third period. The Rails up six to nothing, out shooting the Storm 46 to 10. Uh, both teams have a player in the penalty box here to start the third period. Uh, as number 19 for the Storm, Cooper Anderson uh, has, or excuse me, number 19, Dylan Davidson for the Rails has 45 seconds left in his penalty, a cross check. And number eight uh, for the Storm, Cole Anderson has a minute 32 left in his tripping penalty. And uh, the Rails will get a short power play about a little less than a minute uh, after the Davidson penalty expires and uh, should be running time here to start this period as it's a six bowl deficit in the third. But uh, scoring this last period, Wyatt Meinhein with two goals in the second period. Uh, Tanner Ross and also Austin Bryant each tallied a goal. And the, the second, third, and fourth goal of that period were only about a minute and 20 seconds apart in total. So the rails with a flurry right at the end of that period. And uh, Again, please hit that like button uh, if you like the broadcast and hit subscribe if you want to be notified for all the different uh, events that we broadcast during the school year. Uh, again, our students that are making this broadcast possible tonight, our director, Nikki Olson, our producer, Zach Elstead, our camera, Ben Allen, Maddie McDonald, and Aiden Drake, and our scoreboard is uh, Maddie Bobin, and I should say our director, uh, our director, Zach Elstead, and our producer is Spencer Maida, I should say. So thank you to them, and uh, again, Saturday, 11 o'clock and 2 o'clock, the we'll, Rails TV will be broadcasting the Section 7A Girls Semifinals right here from the Sports and Events Center. So we'll catch that action live. Now right off the draw to start the third period. Puck out to the point, and Nolan Oakstead with the shot. Puck along the side of the net, picked up there by Boysen. Boysen knocked off the puck. Now gets it back, Boysen cuts the middle, gets his pocket pick, now back the other way come the Storm, but good job by Boysen back checking and getting the puck back down in the Storm end, picked up by Stadler. Dropped off there to Carpenter. Carpenter gives way to Althaus, Althaus tries to feed Stadler, Stadler now wins the race of the puck down the rails end. Cooper Johnson steers him aside, now the rails have a power play here for the next 43 seconds. Anla up to Lanthier, Lanthier gains the offensive zone, drops it off to Lee. Now to Anla, down low to Towers. Towers back to Anla. Shot deflected up front and still loose. Still on another great save by Bentler as a shot right from the doorstep. Now the puck's still loose again. Rails hold it in. Another chance, and that was Lanthier, his shot. It went just over the net, so the penalty expires. Rails over two on the power play tonight. Lanthier drops off to Lee. The Rails fourth line, here's Cooper Johnson. Johnson will send it right back down low. Althaus can't control. Puck's still in the offensive zone. Right to Lanthier, Lanthier cuts the middle, loses control, now the puck sent out to neutral by Stadler. Pavlovich will get back there in time to avoid an icing. So 15 minutes left here in the third period. Pavlovich out of the rail zone, he hits the brakes, settles things down, cross to Johnson, Johnson looking. Now cross ice to Meinhein, oh, Meinhein couldn't handle that pass, otherwise he would have had a lot of open ice. Now back the other way, come the storm. Long shot into the zone. That's off the back wall. Pavlovich picks it up. Reverses it to Meinhein. Meinhein battles down low. Good battle in the corner. Now a centering pass. That's knocked away. Gavin Davidson now up to Brecken Ross. Ross is passed to Meinhein in behind him. Now the puck's still loose. Lundgren. Tries an outlet pass, let's go right to the point to Davidson, his shot, that goes off the rafters and we'll have a whistle. The clock still runs, six goal deficit here. Running time in the third period. So if I had to guess, this game will be over in about 14 minutes.
Got to say, senior goaltender Zach Bentler for the Storm has made some outstanding staves here tonight. He's made 45 of them. Now here's Allen's long shot from the point. That went wide, now back the other way. Here comes Althaus. He sends it down low. Riles out to play it. Sends it around, back around the other corner. Now picked up by Carter. Carter drives a rink-wide pass. We're going to have a pe penalty here behind the play. And it's going to be Anala going for the rails. So the Storm's going to get another power play. 0 for 2 already here tonight. Cooper Anala, eye sticking. And he'll be in the box for two. So out to kill for the rails, Oakstead, Carter, Johnson, and Bryant. We'll see uh, if the Storm can muster up some uh, opportunities here. Here's Stadler from the point. Back to Stadler at the top of the circle. Stadler leading scorer for the Storm at the top of this power play. Looking, his shot, that's deflected by Carter. Now Johnson, Johnson swings it around the boards. Carter wins the race, gets hit hard into the wall. Picked up by Stadler. Cross to Carpenter. Carpenter shot off the blocker of Riles. And it goes out to the point. Stadler picks it up there at the top of the circle. Stadler around the defense, around the net, centering pass. And here's the chance. Fanned on it, and Carter's able to kick it out to neutral. The rails get a fresh set of killers on the ice. Carpenter drops it off. No one home, so it's going to be Meeks who picks it up there. Meeks down the near wall, drops it off to Carpenter. Carpenter looking back to Meeks. Meeks shot off the blocker of Riles, and that's sent all the way down by Boysen. So 103 left in the man advantage for the Storm. 11.52 left in period number three. One more regular season game for the Rails after tonight. Two for the Storm. And then it's tourney time. So uh, offsides call. A.J. Riles, uh, hopefully don't jinx him here, but going for his third shutout of the year. Only have 12 saves here tonight. So most of the rest of this power play has been killed on the break between faceoffs. Now 21 seconds left in the advantage. So Stadler back to pick it up for the Storm out of his own zone. Now to Carpenter, back to Stadler. With speed through the neutral zone. Gains the line, hits the brakes. The rails are going to be able to go, uh, oh. Man, high stick penalty, or not a penalty, but high stick call as that puck went through traffic and the storm deflected it and hit the crossbar. Or it might have hit the, the pipe at, on top of the net. And... Uh, so a high sticking call against uh, the Storm sends the face off all the way back down to Bentler's left. So clock still ticking here. 10-10 left here in regulation. Face off to Bentler's left, won by the rails. And it goes out to center, Gavin Davidson there. Over to Johnson, Johnson, good reversal. Now Johnson will send it down low. Bentler settles it behind his goal. Picked up there by Lee, Avery Lee. Now pucks in right back in. And so Caleb Lanthier. On the ice, now Johnson. Johnson tries to shoot. Right there is number 15, Dylan Denzler. So Lee Denzler and Caleb Lanthier out there now for the rails, the fourth line. Getting some ice time here. Now out of the zone is Lundgren. Lundgren gets the puck taken away. Long shot by Caleb Lanthier, that's blocked. So now back the other way comes Meeks. 11 knocks 11 off. Anila back the other way for the rails. Across the blue line. Anila wide. Now around the goal. Anila looking. Still with control. Anila back to Meinheim. Meinheim, good move at the line. Meinheim, two goals tonight. Centering pass. Puck still loose out front. 
Now it's going to be held in. And Meinheim picks it up again. Meinheim tries to get around the defense. Good move there. Meinheim to the middle. And he gets knocked off before he could make the shot. Now here's Brecken Ross at the top of the circle. Ross drops it off to Meinheim. Meinheim looking for the hat trick. He does. He's got it. Why Meinheim with the hat trick. And that'll be a 7-0 lead now. Meinhein with three goals here tonight. The hat trick and one hat out on the ice here. So we'll hear from Fleisch uh, who got the assist there. But now... Uh, Interesting sight, Nolan Oakstead on at center for the Rails. Senior defenseman playing center. 7.45 here left. Now here's a break. Meinhein and Oakstead. Oakstead looking. Meinhein looks. Oakstead. Oh! Sends it across the, the crease. Thought he had it. Scoring for the Rails, his third goal of the hockey game at number 20, Wyatt Meinhein. He got an assist from number 13, Kellen Towers, and number 8, Brecken Ross. That's Meinehein from Towers and Ross at 8.31. And while he's making that announcement, another goal. Looks like this one's going to be Pavlovich uh, with the goal from the point through a screen. And that'll make it 8 to nothing here. Rails with 7 minutes remaining. So clock still ticking here. Two goals this period for the Rails. Meinheim's third, and Pavlovich looks like he's going to get one. Now here's Lee across the red line. He's got Caleb Lanthier with him. Lee tries to send it to the net, now gets it right back. Scoring the goal for Proctor, his fourth of the season, number 13, Kellen Towers. He got an assist from number 27, Carson Pavlovich, and number 7, Tanner Ross. That's Towers from Pavlovich and Ross. That goal comes at 9.40. So Ross picking up lots of points here tonight. That will be his fifth point of the night. Pavlovich also with uh, three assists, to, to four assists here tonight, I should say. And now the Rails looking for more here as six minutes left and counting. Now Boysen across the blue line. Boysen drops it off for Lee. Lee takes a shot. That's off the side of the net. And now that puck goes into the North Shore bench. As mentioned, North Shore after tonight will host International Falls on Tuesday at Rukavina Arena at 6 o'clock. And then we'll finish the season on Thursday next week at St. Paul Johnson at 6 p.m. as well. And for the Rails after tonight, it's next Thursday against North Shore, or excuse me, Northern Lakes uh, right here at the St. Luke Sports and Event Center. And then that's it for the regular season. A very successful one. Looks like the Rails will move to 18 and 6 after tonight's game. And North Shore will fall to 10, 10, and 3. And as I mentioned, this very well could be the first round matchup for the Section 7A quarterfinals. As North Shore could possibly be the number five seed and the Rails could be number four. There's potential that there's potential that the Rails could be a three seed if things work out in their favor. So it looks like Oakstead's going to get a penalty here. So, so the Storm will go on the power play again. Oakstead getting the penalty here. Once again, I appreciate you joining us here tonight, everyone. Rails with a good showing here tonight on senior night. Carpenter across to Stadler. Stadler's shot right at Riles. He makes a save, his 13th of tonight. Roughing. Oh. Oak says penalty a rough. <laughs> 46 saves tonight for Zach Bentler. 13 saves for A.J. Riles, looking for his third shutout. We'll see if the Storm can uh, get one past him here on the power play. There's a shot off the... Good. 
Now Breckenross off the boards, up to Giswold. Giswold. Now it's going to be sent all the way down. No ice as there's power play. So picking it up there will be Jacob Carpenter for the storm. Now Towers knocks the storm off the puck. Good move at the line for Ross. Ross down low, still with control. Ross out of the corner, right out in front, shorthanded. Puck still loose. Another shot, that's blocked by Stadler. So good chance, shorthanded for the rails. Now back the other way. Good job by Towers picking the pocket of number eight, Cole Anderson. Now here's Althaus. Can't get out of his own end. Good kill here for the rails. 30 seconds left in the Oakstead penalty. Now Meinhein with the check there. Densler with the block on the kill. He'll send it all the way down. 10 seconds left in the Oakstead penalty. And we're now to about two and a half minutes left in this contest. Now Meinhein in his own end. Rails at full strength. Denzler pins the storm against the wall. Comes away with it. Caleb Lanthier back to Bryant. Bryant with speed through the offensive zone. Austin Bryant taking a look. Backhand centering attempt trying to hit Lee. That goes all the way to the other corner. Lanthier sends it to the net. Outlet pass. That gets out of the zone. Now back the other way comes Cade Peterson. Peterson shot. That's in the glove of Riles. He'll keep it going. Meinhein with speed out of his own end. Long rink wide pass to Avery Lee. Lee now looking. Lee he tries the center. Gets it right back. Meinhein looking. Ross down low to Boisen. Boisen sharp angle shot. Hits the side of the net. Now it's going to be held in by Davidson and finally it does squirt out to neutral. Brecken Ross right there. Good move at the line by Ross. Up to Boisen. Boisen cuts the middle. Boisen shot. That goes right over the net. Try and hit that upper corner. Approaching one minute left to play here. And that puck will come out to neutral. Now Lee. Up to Oakstead. Oakstead just sends it down low. One minute left here in the third. Aldhaus sends it to the middle, trying to hit Stadler. Stadler able to hit his partner, number seven, Brody Bronikowski. Now Brecken Ross, 29 seconds left. Next whistle should end it if there is one. Now Ross, given speed. Ross hits the brakes at the line. Boisen, he just reverses. Boisen looking for help. Boisen out of the corner. Centering pass, trying to hit Lanthier there. Shot, that's by, Den by Davidson. 2-1, that'll do it here for tonight. As the rails victorious, 8-0. Over the storm, shots 56-15, so 48 saves by Zach Bentler. A lot of them very outstanding saves, uh, but that's not enough as Riles gets his third shutout. And I would say you got to give uh, a star to uh, Wyatt Meinhein, a hat trick, and Tanner Ross, five-point night, and Carson Pavlovich, uh, four-point night. So a lot, a lot of rails on the scorecard uh, here tonight, and... Uh, senior night, good way to celebrate senior night. And again, if you enjoyed the broadcast, please hit the like button so our students know. And hit that subscribe button to be notified for our next broadcast. And that'll be Saturday as the Rails TV will be broadcasting live the girls section 7A semifinals with the Mirage against the Cloakiasco Carlton Lumberjacks at 11. And it's the uh, Marshall against the Moose Lake area at 2. Uh, I'll be on the call along with Glenn Gilderman will be uh, helping me out then. Glenn, a longtime Mirage head coach, so it'll be good to have him on the broadcast. But with that, we're going to sign off and say see you next time. Have a great night.
We're at a crossroads. From time to time, a section of rail needs repair. That doesn't mean the whole line needs replacement. The same way being proud of your history doesn't mean you're stuck in the past. No, we're not stuck. We hear the whistle blowing and we're inspired. Inspired by the legacy of the people who transformed this terrain into a rail yard that supplied America with the ore needed to win world wars. We're inspired by our unshakable identity, hanging tight like David facing down Goliaths. And we're moved by stories of our community's kindness. No matter who needs help, neighbors pitch in and get the job done. Hushed and humbled are more at play than pontification. But don't for one second think that means Proctor is a simple small town. It was built as a company town, and it continues down the tracks of time. And this rail revival is our destination.